our dedication today uh, is a very special dedication. I'm going to back up to um, September of last year when I was lucky enough to be a guest on Six Cents, the uh, radio show, the national radio show that Nikki Six from Motley Crue hosts. And, uh, and Nikki's assistant, Sarah, uh, at the end of the, uh, of the taping of the show, pulled me aside and said to me that her best friend uh, had just lost her daughter to cancer, uh, a little girl. And would it be okay if she gave me, um, gave her friend my number? And we um, have been friends with her friend, uh, Maylai, uh, since the first phone call that came in, and probably the next day. And we um, have taken Maylai uh, into our arms, and she has, um, she has, she has uh, availed herself to Joanne and I and to the entire Pavlov and Dangerbird families. We absolutely love her. Um, she uh, has just moved to London where she's lived in the past, so I'm going to say she's moved back to London. And uh, we saw her last at at Alex Eusebio's uh, uh, dinner back at Pavlov HQ about a month ago. Alex is one of the writers who is riding with us this week who is a famous chef. And so... Tonight, um, we are remembering uh, May Lai's daughter, Minty. Uh, if you follow her Facebook, uh, you know Minty very well because she posts amazing, inspiring um, posts about Minty all the time. Um, I actually have to look at the paper in front of me to know Minty's full name uh, because I only know her as Minty. Her name is uh, Araminta uh, Sindabond. And... Um, and uh, otherwise known as Minty. Awesome name. She was diagnosed with a brain uh, tumor at six weeks old, brain cancer at six weeks old, and she um, passed away the day after her first birthday. So she was diagnosed in September of 2009, um, which was just one month before we started the first uh, Pablo Across America, and she passed away uh, July 11, 2010. We have met many, many people who have found uh, grace in life through their um, struggles, through the challenges of cancer diagnosis and treatment. Um, that's a, a bucket of people. There's a, uh, there's a small cup inside that bucket. Uh, Joanne and I are in that. May Lai is in that. All of the parents that we dedicate to it in, in the nighttime hours are in that cup inside the bucket. And that cup, of course, is parents who have lost their children. Um, Joanne and I have been talking a lot lately about the war metaphors and the fighting metaphors that are uh, so common when we talk about cancer. Uh, Joanne has sworn off of those metaphors, she's, she's over it. I, because I associate that fight and, and grinding it out with what we do out here on the road, uh, I'm, I'm still okay with them. I think I'm nearing the end of it, but, but the thing is, is that when you, um, when you go to war, there's a whole process, there's a whole process that goes on from the time that you enlist or are drafted, and then you're trained, and then you develop your new friendships, and then that becomes the new normal, and then you get shipped off to some forwarding uh, uh, camp or station, and then you go to the front lines. And then some of those people that you've learned to trust and that have become your best friends in the world because your world is just this, this thing that you're in, uh, some of those people may not make it. You may have to pull uh, your best friend from boot camp um, to a place where, where after the battle's over, um, the medical teams can take away his body so that his family or her family can, um, can honor, uh, that, that person with a funeral. And, um, you then have to go on 
and wake up the next day and do whatever it is that your uh, military unit is supposed to be doing, presumably fighting the war the next day. And I can tell you that that's exactly what it's like going through um, 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 your child being diagnosed with cancer, going through treatment, and then losing your child. And then after the, the um, honeymoon period of everybody being around you after your child passes away, whereas often it does, and it's not anyone's fault, but it does, um, you have to keep going on every day. Melai has to go on every day, and Minty physically is not here. We all have our spiritual beliefs, um, and some of us I know believe that there are no spiritual beliefs, and uh, we welcome everybody's uh, belief systems, we welcome everybody's view, um, because of course it's only up to you what you believe. But um, we know that our children are gone from this world. We would all agree with that. And uh, so the, the military metaphor works for me uh, pretty well because I feel like uh, May Lai <coughs> lost her little girl. But she still has to get up every day and live in, and live in this world, just like a soldier has to get up the next day and fight the war. And so there's the metaphor, the metaphor works for me. Um, I have no doubt that today Minty would be uh, the, the brightest light in any room she walked in. Um, is a uh, three and a half or four year old girl. I have no doubt about it. Um, she was born in 2009. I'm sorry, she'd be two and a half right now. Going on two and a half. I'm not so good with numbers right now. I, I know that because everything I've read about her, all the photos I've seen, all of May Lai's amazing writing about Minty, and then seeing May Lai and seeing who she is, I just know that this little girl, Minty, would be just a bright, amazing little kid in any room she walked into. Uh, she would be a little girl who would make people uh, uh, feel like, wow, that is, that is childhood right there. That's what it's all about. And so tonight um, we are honoring Minty. We are honoring May Lai and her whole family. Um, and we are also honoring um, Sarah and Nikki for inviting me uh, to speak about Pavlov and Pablo Across America uh, on Sixth Sense a little over a year ago, um, you always have to remember, like, I, I'm not a celebrity. I'm someone's dad. Um, I'm the father of a little boy who um, was playing one day and then was diagnosed with cancer. Um, and I'm lucky enough to be invited to places sometimes that allow our story uh, as a family and the Pablo story as a foundation to be heard across entire continents and across the world and, and it really takes a special person like Sarah to make this connection between two um, grieving cancer parents um, it's really it's really something so this is a dedication uh, to so many things tonight and um, I honor all of you for watching this. We're having a great time out here. We are uh, very mindful of what we're doing out here. And uh, we'll see you in the morning when we make our dedication as we make our, our way south to hopefully warmer air and hopefully uh, much less uh, populated roads. So good night.